What's up guys? So today I've got a short video for you. I want to take the unique Typhoon H up in the air. Um, I've got it set to take raw images plus JPEG images. Um, it's fall here in Nashville, Tennessee, so we got some beautiful trees. Um, I think next week will be a little bit better, but um, we're going to take it up in the sky. There's no wind, so today I think is going to be a good day for a panoramic. And uh, we're going to try to take some raw images of the trees. So, here we go guys. Alright guys, that was a pretty awesome flight. Um, so since it's around sunset, it's kind of the golden hour down here on Earth. <laughs> but up in the sky, the sun is still... Um, you know the sun the sun will set in like another hour or so so um what that meant was some of my shots um i'll show you um at the end of this video some of my shots um were pointed at the sun so like when i was doing the 360 degree panoramic um i had some crazy lens flare so i don't think a lot of those pictures are going to turn out but what this thing does is it takes 18 pictures while it's up there and it took 18 jpegs and it took 18 raw images so out of those i'm pretty sure there's some usable images and you know we'll see when we get in the lab but the image where i'm pointing straight at the sun when it when we throw it into raw into photoshop and play around with it it might end up being a really cool shot with a lens flare in it and all so um, overall it was a good flight um, I got probably six or seven panoramas um, that's 18 shots each raw and JPEG um, and looking at the card it took probably um, maybe three gigs um, in that flight of just images so it took a lot of images guys um, I was over the mansion um, when I got the low battery warning. Um, so I finished that panoramic and then I brought it right over here next to me um, and just decided to do another panoramic. I could always cancel and I could land the bird. So I was able to get that entire panorama, bring it over safely to, um, to me in my car and um, landed it. So really impressed. Like I've, I've been able to get maybe two, almost three panoramas with my DJI Spark using Litchi, or sorry, using my DJI Mavic using Litchi. Um, so, uh, I th and I think the fact that this bird can sit right where it's at with the landing gear up and the, and the bird doesn't have to move itself, it can just sit there and the only thing moving is the camera, I think it uses a lot less energy than for this thing to constantly spin around and take pictures. So really impressed with that. Um, I think the, the, so far the, the unique Typhoon H is a great little photography tool. Um, you know, and they're the same price as a Mavic right now, cheaper than the Platinum. So, um, you know, for this Christmas season, if you're planning on getting a drone, um, you could either spend a lot of money on this year's model or um, spend the same amount of money on last year's model that was more expensive. So um, Unique has, has more drones, has newer drones out. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about possibly upgrading to some of them. But um, for what I paid for this and what it is retail right now um, is a great deal, guys. And I think, um, I think it's perfect for a beginner drone. Um, but it's also kind of a prosumer device. Um, this gimbal, um, the removable gimbal, um, I really like this drone, guys. And the, the controller is top-notch. It's about the best controller you could get. So, um, that's all I got, guys. So, we're going to go in the lab right now and, uh, and take a look at these images, see what we got. 
So if I don't sign off at the end of the video, peace out guys and have a wonderful day. All right guys, so we're here in the lab. Um, I got Photoshop open and uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, first I'm gonna, just gonna show you one of the images in RAW that uh, the Typhoon H took. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it into Photoshop and it's going to open up raw. Um, the reason I wanted to open up this image is the sun was over here. The lens flare, like the reflection, refraction or whatever, is over here. Um, so I just want to show you guys what you can do with this. So it's a little overexposed, so I'm going to bump the exposure down a little bit. Um, we're going to take the saturation. We're going to bump the saturation up a little bit. That's a little crazy. We're going to bring it down a little bit of the vibrance. And then we're going to change the temperature a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I like that. And then take the vibrance about there, saturation down a little bit. I want to bring out these highlights a little bit. Make the shadow darker. Make the blacks black. Now that we've done all that, I want to bring up the exposure a little bit. So there you go, guys. Um, I kind of wish the blue sky was down a little bit further, but um, I think that's a pretty cool image. So there's that. So what I've done is I've opened up Bridge and um, I have this panorama selected so image 59 through 77 as you can see it's real easy to pick out where the panoramas are because this is the last shot is pointing straight at the ground and the first shot is pointing straight at the horizon so it's a definite distinction between the images um, this one's going to be pretty good because I only have the the feet in the shot barely. Um, so we're going to right click on it and we're going to open in camera raw. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to edit every image at the same time. So we're going to select all of them but we're going to use this as our base. Um, and what I did when I was taking these images is I locked the exposure to manual um, and I also lock the white balance. And what that does is it gives me a consistent shot throughout the panorama. Um, if you have it set to auto, um, the light in the sky is a lot different than the light on the ground. The ground is pretty dark, the sky is pretty light. Um, and in a tiny planet, um, the money shot is the ground. It's not the sky. So I wanted the center actually this shot right here with this orange tree these dead trees these yellowish greenish trees that's gonna be my money shot that's gonna be the middle of the of the planet so I want to use this as my base um, so I'm gonna so since I have all these images selected at the same time um, when I adjust the exposure it's gonna adjust all of them did you see that? It just changed all of them. Um, I'm going to bump my saturation up a little bit because I want that orange tree to pop. See how all of a sudden we've got yellow trees. We've got this kind of bluish green tree. We've got this yellowish green tree. We've got these dead trees. We've got this little red stuff going on here. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, 
want to bump the exposure up a little bit. That's looking really good, guys. And then um, I want to crunch the blacks. Down a little bit. Um, let's see what vibrance. Give it a little. Um, these trees are beautiful. Um, and I want to really accentuate the colors. Um, and it was a cold night, so the temperature was kind of cold. Um, but fall, I kind of like, I think warm might be good. We're going to pump the saturation up just a little bit more. Um, and then the contrast right there. So check this blue tree out, guys. There's a blue tree. We got this orange tree. We got this yellow going on. All right. So let's see what else we got going. Ooh, that looks really good. I love these. I don't know what this is. Surely they're not lawnmower tracks. I don't know what those are, guys. But th that looks pretty cool. Um, that looks pretty good. I love this is going to be kind of washed out, but I love what's going on here. And this will be the edge of the planet, so it, it won't be a big deal. Um, that looks pretty good. All right, guys. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the images. Pan one. Okay. So that's the folder we're going to go in. Um, file extension. We're going to make these JPEGs. We're going to make the quality maximum. And we're going to save them. So we're going to drag them into AutoPano. We've got 18 images, so that's good. Let's detect. Now, if we did a good job, then it should auto detect pretty well. It wasn't windy, um, and and I think the rotations and the angles were pretty precise, guys. So here we go. Wow, that looks pretty good, guys. Um, so let's go in here to edit mode and let's see what we got going on. Wow, guys. At first glance, I don't see any issues at all. I'm sure there are some, but you know what we're going to do, guys? We're going to go on faith that this is good. Okay? Are you with me? So one thing the auto panda does is it automatically crops. Um, and so I like the crop to be full sphere. We're going to save those changes. Okay. Now we're going to render. Um, so we're going to change this to 8,000. We're just going to render it to the desktop. All right. All right, guys. So we've got this opened up in uh, Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Um, I'm going to grab color from there. I'm going to grab color from there and then I am going to change my gradient to that and I'm going to go straight up okay and I'm going to switch the layers out I'm just going to erase this top layer. And the reason I use a fuzzy eraser is it's really easy to blend things. Is I'm going to take this and merge down. Okay. Um, that way we have one layer. We're going to go to 3D, Spherical Panorama. New Panorama Layer from Selected Layer. And this is really neat. 
You're about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch to a 3D workspace? Yes, I would. Thank you, Photoshop, for thinking of me. All right, guys, so now that we have it in the 3D workspace, um, we can move the image around. Um, look how good that stitch is, guys. Man. I'm sure there's something wrong with it, and I'll probably find it tomorrow. <laughs> um, but the part that I was mainly concerned about, these trees right here in the foreground, are brilliant. So something, something that we did when we did the gradient is we created this beautiful seam right here. You see it right here, guys? So what you can do with the seam right here, guys, is we're going to take the stamp tool. We're going to hit the Alt key over here. We're going to move over here. We're just going to kill that seam. Okay, so now that we have this done, um, we are going to export the panorama. All right, guys, we're here at Kula. We're going to upload. Um, we're going to drag the image, drop it right there. Um, I'm going to set the heading over here. Um, because I kind of want that to be where it starts. Um, but something that's cool here, guys, is um, is you can do an automatic um, tiny planet. Um, and I don't, I don't like this being the focus because it kind of doesn't um, work for me. I really like the sun over there. Um, and I'm thinking that's a good spot for my tiny planet. So yeah, there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next round.